Evening guys, Mark here, Celtic Crossbows. We're going to be looking at some things tonight, such as the new post quarter limb. See how this performs. Is it good for indoor testing? It does it give you a realistic experience with your bow, as if you're using a fully powered limb. So we're going to be fitting this uh, Stinger 2 survival with a CQ limb. Um, it's got the closing riser, so it's a perfect candidate for the CQ limb for a regular indoor use crossbow for testing of bolts. Some of the bolts we'll be testing and putting through the pieces are, because people have asked for this, the standard alloy um, bodkin target nib for using with the sponge targets, the heavyweight target bolts, the heavyweight bodkin, and the sports alloy bodkin. So we're gonna have five shots with each at the target and see how we're using the 35 pound CQ limb, um, how they group, how they perform. Now this is gonna be interesting. The first round of shots we're gonna do using the open sights on, this, on the survival. Um, afterwards, we're gonna swap it out and fit the scope and shoot from a, a field target position uh, or possibly so using a standard uh, holding a stand position to test things out. For groupage, we do have my brand new steamboat target, so perfect for the CQ limb for testing. Um, and it won't be chewed up using the, the, the broader head. So it'll be something. This is going to be a, quite a long test, I think, so settle down, enjoy, and we're going to see where we go from. I think uh, we're going to be a, a lot of edits on this. Um, good time we reload every shot individually with the single shot crossbow and um, film 5, 10, 15, 20 shots with the, uh, the open sights and another 20 shots with the scope. I think it's going to leave a lot of time on the video. We're going to be going in over half an hour. So I think the easiest thing to do is, is take some of the shots, show some of the shots being fired and the results and see where we go from there. Right, okay then guys, we're on target now. First up, you're going five shots with the basic um, field tips to give us a starting point of where to shoot at. Right then, first of five, here we go with the standard magazine. Okay. Standard size, I should have said. I can see the me now with the, the side picture with this. You've got to get your face right right down into, into the cheek piece to get that rear sight up so it's in line with the front. So now I can get my eye in with these sights, first I use them. Yeah. You guys just seen that? We're only slightly downhill. We're gonna put the safety catch on. We're gonna bend that finger a bit. Because our finger is not holding. the bolt as much as I would like. Okay, let's go and have a look. 
Okay, so we've done some run and repairs, guys. Our finger, I've rebent and reprofiled this. It wasn't holding the bolts at all, so it was pointing slightly downhill. You know, at the 10 meter range, the bolts were sliding out. And I brought up the rear sight by a significant amount, about half the length and travel the blade. Because even at 10 meters, shoes it in. Let me see, 6, 12, 14 inches low using the open sight. So let's see now and see what happens with these sights. We're going to take the first five shots again to give it a, a supporting chance with these sights. Okay, so picture my face is not down so low on the cheek, I go for the centre spot. So we, we, I took the sight blade up halfway up the frame on the rear and she's come up by about six inches. Send a spot again. I'm aiming at six o'clock on the centre bolt. is a nine bolt spread. I'm aiming at six o'clock on a centre bolt. So as a walking spread, we, we bring in the sights in as, as we're going. Here's our picture. It is quite tricky to get a good group with these sights. Because the sighting plane is so short. Okay. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so here's our first spread. You can see it's a brand new target. No other impacts in there. Um, this was our, uh, our first group of shots. was actually hitting down on the floor here and skating in. Into hitting beer. Hitting beer on the board. Um, change of sights. So I know aiming here, and this is tend to be around about six o'clock, is what I'm getting. These were the first two as I bring our sight picture in. Okay, the next up then, I'm gonna use five of the custom bolts, the lightweight bodkin, to see where they go on target. I'm gonna keep up and down swapping the bolts. So we go five of the five of the pink, and we're gonna see now how the pink perform. Okay then, here we go. Like I said, the, the open sights group at 10 meters would spread out a lot more at 25, 30 meters. Our safety is off. Give a good sight picture. I think the sights need to be a little bit higher than the open sights because I'm really ramming my face down at the stock to get a consistent picture. But as they say, it's a survival bow, they're emergency sites. The sites to be used in an emergency. So let's have a look now, see how those five went. Not switching the camera off this time, we're just gonna run straight down and have a quick look to see how the shots turned out. Now you can see all filming in one go. Right, okay, as you can see now, group's getting slightly better with practice. With the open sights, every time we group in, so you can see the group is coming in at five o'clock. 
more so. Okay, so we're going to try the five silver arrows now and, and see where we go from there. Like I say, you can't beat a nice bit of experimental archaeology to see where we go. Actually, I don't think I we need to simulate with the five of the five bodkins now. I think we'll go with the five carbon fiber uh, bodkins, heavyweight bodkins, and see how these behave. So, switch off a second while I check these out. Okay, so we're going to go up with it now. The five heavyweight carbon fiber. See how they go. She's behaving much better since I've adjusted the the finger on the front. She's holding the bolt a uh, bolt so like she's supposed to. Um, sights are come up a little bit. Let's see what we get. I prefer a little bit of a hole under as opposed to a hole over or shooting straight at the target. Because with your, your target covered, you're masking your aiming point. Now surprisingly, that one dropped out two inches low. Again, I think this is down to the open sight. Because the, the sighting rate is so short. Now if you're so incredibly consistent. With the open sights. Okay, I can see a lovely pattern forming. A walking pattern again as I'm walking it up the board to get my sign point. These do drop. Okay, this is a really good picture. You can see now where, where the heavyweight bodkins are dropping as opposed to the standard lightweight bodkins. Let's go and have a look again to see the difference. And you can see where I've used the same sighting point and I've had to bring the point of impact up. So here we go. You can see where the first one's hit low. It's, these are the, the heavyweight bodkins here. So they hit low and they walk, I've had to walk them up the target. So I start off aiming here and I've had to come up to here. So they drop in six inches lower at least so from aiming here to there as opposed to the lightweight bolts so the lightweight bolts that's the purple and uh, so the purple is the standard lightweight bodkin sport bodkin the blue is the standard target bolts whereas the heavyweights the chrome tips you can see a drop in much lower than the others so we're going to try now the heavyweight target tips and see how they perform on target as well Okay. Here we are with the heavyweight targets now. Five of these. One, two, three, four, five. A series form, stick them in the back pocket for single shot crossbows. Back pocket is still the best. What well, God invented your back pocket for. Okay, first bolt in. Yeah, you see this now. He's performed virtually identical to the heavyweight Bodkins. A really good bolt for working with. 
we'll keep this, go have a look. So it's the last one then, that was the last shot with the open sight. So we're gonna fit the scope and come back at it again. And we're gonna see then, uh, what's going on. Okay, so here we are. So the carbon fibers now, are these ones down here, and the light gloss black here, here and here, are the heavyweight uh, target tips. So they group in virtually the same at six o'clock, so everything is grouping in six o'clock low, but at 10 meters, that's a large spread for open sights. Um, survival between there and there, that could be the difference between hitting a, a, a rabbit or missing altogether. It's the difference between a clean kill and an injury. So that's something to watch out for. And then, so, we're going to come back over now, reset, retrieve our bolts, fit our scope, and see where we go. Right, we reverted to a single spot now from a five spot. You got the scope on, it's not zeroed in, so we're going to have five quick shots now with the blue bodkins to find our point of aim. So I can tell you straight away, she's hitting bang on six o'clock. We just need to, to raise her up, I think. So we have a second shot. You move your sights on your averages, don't take one shot and move your sights. Take a series of shots. Then move your sights based on your average. As I'll go five shot spread and see because it's only snap shooting to get out point of impact. Okay, so looking in here, so we're perfectly true. Here we are, look exactly level. So we, our height adjustment is right, or consistency is right, but she's coming six inches low. And the spread, I say the middle of the spread is here. So at about seven o'clock on the target, so we need to come up and to the right on the sights to bring us back on bully. Can't beat a bit of bully. Right then, so let's just adjust our sights. Okay then guys, we're back on the five spot, uh, sorry, the nine spot. I had uh, 20 shots, ish, Zero in the scope in. So we're going to work top left to bottom right, five shots at each um, spot to see where she's grouping with the scope. Now I couldn't do this with the open sights. Interesting. Show the results in a minute. Okay. 
Okay, so that's five now with the bodkins, the blue bodkins. Okay, we are about 40 shots now out of this bow. Time to get the string, the rail, a bit of a loop. And we go have the next five shots now with the target bodkins or target point heavyweight. So I see how these fly now compared to the lightweight target. Right, the grouping is fantastic. Really good grouping compared to the lightweights. It is what I said it would be there dropping much lower with the five shots with the heavyweight bodkin. I want to bring the sights up, but you will still see how much improved the sighting is. Okay, we've got the five now with a heavyweight um, field tip bodkin, the, the 228 green. And we're going for the, the top right hand target. And because the extra weight of these, I'm aiming uh, over 12 o'clock. I'm an excellent group coming. I like this. That was me. Third shot I release early. I should have lowered the bow, took another breath. Okay, last shot with a heavy bodkin. Okay, out of flyer. Can't explain that one. The last uh, five shots, we're going to use the silver bodkins because one of the flights stripped out of the, of the pink. Okay, we're gonna go for a uh, center bull. Aim in low. Because I'm after the group is where I want. I snatched that shot, that was my fault. Low and right. These figures might come for nothing though, because when using a heavyweight limb 
all these figures will change. Okay, let's go have a look. Now I'm switching the camera off. Taking you straight down and there's some really, really interesting results. <coughs> which you'll see yourself now. Significantly between the lightweight and the heavyweight bodkins. Okay, let's have a look here. Our first group, the lightweights. As you can see, I was aiming here and I started aiming down here so I aimed a little bit higher. To bring it up as quite a large spread this is the heavyweight bodkins look at the difference in our group that is a fantastic group really tight and this is where i change my sight picture so this is the heavyweight target tip this is the heavyweight bodkin again great group this one's a flyer i don't know what happened with this one here but it kind of done his own thing and here we are again with the lightweights look is it quite a large spread the same as with the other lightweight, it's a large spread. So I can honestly say the lightweight, the, the open rail is not a particularly good bolt for the open rail. For the open rail on survival, heavier bolts are much, much better. Okay, let's go back and have a chat. Okay, what we discovered? Well, we discovered that even with top of the line professionally made bolts, but they do sometimes come apart. It happens. This is a brand new steamboat bolt, the vein's fallen off it. Mass production, it happens. It's life, get used to it. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the other shots now. So let's see what we got. Okay, so these are the lightweight bolts. We've got a coming angle, as you can see, better on the camera. Quite a large spread, as you can see. This is only 10 meters. The heavyweight bolts, however, fantastic group. This one was me, I snatched the trigger on that one. I felt myself do it. You can go back in the video, you can see it. So this is the heavyweight match. Much, much better group than the lightweight practice. But again, these are what it says on the tin. These are practice bolts. These are for, for you to get used to using your equipment, um, practice with it, um, practice your trigger technique, sighting technique, it doesn't really matter where it hits down range. Heavyweight bodkin again beer. This was a flyer. Could have been me to take it out. That's these ones. Again, you can see the group. No other holes in the mat. This is a brand new mat. So that's the group. Um, really good group. Again, like I said, I've only literally just put the scope on the crossbow. So I have to get used to using it and dial it in to be accurate. On these ones, I'm aiming center ball. I'm a tin here. On these ones, I'm aiming top of ball. I'm a tin here about six inches low. Now these ones, these are the sports bolts. Um, I want to try these in the magazine because I want to see how they behave in a magazine. So I might do a quick one now for you guys with a magazine. Okay, then, folks, just getting out my AR6. We're going to give it a test now with the other bolts in the magazine. Okay then folks, here we are, completely different configuration. We know with my um, Stinger 2, custom tuning trigger, Magnum limb. Um, and we're going to see how she performs as opposed to the um, the others. So, five in a stack, and we're going for the center bolt. Wow. Here's the difference between this and the 35 pound limb. Much, much heavier trigger.
I don't like these sights at all for the post. Um, I much prefer the, 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 the five shot sights on the aluminium magazine. One shot left then. I said, these sights, I don't like them, I hate them. Hate them, hate them, much prefer the sights on the metal magazine. Okay, so as I look at the target now. Okay, look at our group. One, two, three, four, five. They went up the top. Now this is using the same bolt from a higher poundage limb. Um, the group, as you can see, is totally different. The group is completely transformed using the 120 limb and the enclosed magazine to give it a bit better stability in the barrel. So if you're not happy with the groups, try them in a different configuration like this and you will see your boat performance will transform. Okay, so the difference in the performance on the 120 limb to the 35 look. First start, your bodkins there are really sunk all the way through. If you look on the rear, they are all the way through. I know this because I just caught it up and stuck my hand right on it and that hurt like a bitch. In fact, it's, it's bleeding now. But look at the group. Look how tight that group is. And as with the open sights on the, the plastic magazine, which I just said I'm not a fan of. But look at the group I got. Ignore that fly, that was the first shot. That, compared to even using the scope with the low power limb, shows the difference of having the extra energy through the flight. It gives you a much truer direct line of flight. Okay, so here we are. I was just literally just touching the back of the bolts, like you see, and it's uh, give me it's deep enough to give a, a nice a nice scratch, and she's bleeding. So penetration through that incredibly dense foam um, against skin, no opposition at all. If it was somebody in a thick leather jacket or something like that for home defence, the heavyweight bodkins get the pack. They are fantastic. In fact, that's not even the heavyweight bodkins. That's the that's the lightweight bodkins, which isn't, aren't, shouldn't be used with the 120 limb. But I just did. Um, you know, pull them out now. Have a look and see if they bent or damaged or anything. Okay, so here's our bodkins in here now. I can't push them through by my hand because um, I'm not stupid enough to. So I haven't got a, I don't want to drive through with a hammer, so I'm going to use the base of my arrow rest and just press them back through with the base of my arrow jig, like so. There you go. Nicely does it. There you go. And that's how now see how flights have come out. See what's see what's damaged on the flights again. One, two, three-ish. Can you pass it? Four, five. So let's have a look at our flights here now. A little bit of maintenance required on it. But the shaft is straight. That one's good, no maintenance required on there. A little bit of foam collect on it, no maintenance required. No required on there. So, are the five bolts, the lightweight alloys. That one just wants a little tiny blob of glue on the front of that flight. And the other pink one repaired. So they will come up tickety boo. So what have we discovered then guys? Right. If the bolt is not performing with a 35 pound limb or lower, or lower poundage limb or with the open rail, 
Try it with a magazine on. Try it with a higher poundage, as we just discovered with these bolts. With 90 pounds more of force behind them, and in a, from a magazine, with the weight of the bolts on top of the finger to stabilize them in the rail, which is the important thing, they've been stabilizing the rail, um, so you've got a good weight on top holding the bolts in position, you get much better consistency than even when we're using a scope. So I think if I perform this test again with a scope on the AR6, it would be an even better result. Which goes back, if you see my, guy, my video guys on survival crossbows, um, I said the Steamboat Compact was in much better need of a heavyweight longer bolt. So what are we discovering guys with the compact? The three lightweight bolts all had quite a large spread using a low power limb. Grouping was greatly improved with the heavyweight bolts. And it goes back to what I said all along that with 250, 300 grain bolts, such as my, my long range bolts, you have even better accuracy from the Steambow uh, Survival. So, if you're getting bolts for your Steambow Survival, use heavyweight bolts. Even if you're using the low power limbs, you get much better accuracy and consistency with the heavyweight bolts, as my video just showed. Using the same bolts in a closing riser, with a finger pressing down on top, the full length of the bolt holding stable in the barrel increases the accuracy yet again. So, heavyweight bolts, long range bolts such as my um, Hornet, around uh, 250 grain, behaves much, much, much better than the standard, standard practice bolt, standard botkin. Uh, the 228 grain, 227 grain heavyweight bolts are better again. Um, and the tungsten tip carbon are even better again. I think we'll do another video because my battery is about a day on the heavyweight long range bolts on another day from the Steambow Survival. Thanks for watching guys. Hit the like button, subscribe, share the hell out of the video, click like on the petition. And if you love me, hit the thumbs up button and um, Buy me a coffee or something. Cheers guys. Thanks. Bye bye.